Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and I've got a detailed weather forecast update coming your way for the 21st of October 2025. There's a lot to talk about today, including a severe thunderstorm outbreak possible now in southeast Queensland on Thursday and widespread severe thunderstorms expected through South Australia, pockets of New South Wales and Victoria throughout the course of today and tomorrow, including the risk of some dust storms as well. A tropical low offshore from Western Australia, not expected to become a cyclone, but still an interesting feature. Uh, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. But over in towards southeast Queensland, where the top story is those severe thunderstorms that could be coming through on Thursday once again from another sea breeze line, which means conditions are going to be primed for some pretty powerful thunderstorms. Now, whilst the conditions are not as good and as well-rounded as what we were looking at uh, for Saturday's forecast that produced those whopper severe thunderstorms outside of Bow Desert, it still looks pretty strong and pretty gnarly, and we could be seeing some strong thunderstorms develop along the Sunshine Coast towards the north and the northwest of Brisbane. Let me show you what I mean. So on uh, uh, Thursday, we're going to see this sea breeze line sweep up into the state. It's going to start off very, very warm across southeast Queensland. We're expecting a lot of places to get up towards the high 30s, even into the early 40s, through parts of the Sunshine Coast and then into the Granite Belt and Darling Downs. And then this sea breeze is going to push up through the southeast corners of Queensland and the northeast corners of New South Wales from about 1 or 2 o'clock in New South Wales and then out to about 3 o'clock in towards the Gold Coast and the Brisbane City area. This will be that big, strong southerly change. You can see wind gusts here around that 60 kilometer an hour mark, but you can see that they are really contrasting with these northerly winds that are coming through here and these westerlies that are coming through in the interior parts of Queensland. Warm, moist air, warm, dry air, and cool, moist air coming in from the south. Now, that is uh, the conditions that create some of the strongest thunderstorms that Australia has to offer, and it's the exact same stuff that set off that massive outbreak that we saw on Saturday, just gone across southeast Queensland. And you can see the east here, where forecast model has from about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon onwards, thunderstorms beginning to develop down in towards the southeast of Queensland. And very weak ones, we're not expecting anything too crazy because there will be too much dry air. But a little bit later on into the afternoon at about four o'clock, we see these stronger thunderstorms begin to develop inland from Caboolture, Maroochydore, and Noosa and out towards Kingaroy and Kilcoy. These thunderstorms could be quite strong. They're going to find themselves in a decent environment. There will be some okay uh, humidity levels throughout the environment. There's a bit of a dry slot as well into the upper levels of the atmosphere, and then it becomes a lot more humid again. However, considering how warm it's going to get, obviously we are going to be talking about a pretty prolonged dry air intrusion into the uh, into these parts of the Sunshine Coast. And you can see around Gympie actually when the temperatures are expected to be at their maximum close to two or three o'clock, the humidity values are only about 25 to 30% on the ground at the surface level there. And it doesn't get much better the higher up you get as well. You can see that just weak intrusion of dry air through the lower levels. And then you can see it gets a little bit humid again. And then we have that big dry air intrusion at the 400 HPA range. So overall, the environment is just on that okay uh, kind of complement for these thunderstorms. It's not looking the best, but it also isn't looking the worst. And coupled with the fact that we do have some actually pretty decent convective available potential energy values, particularly on the Sunshine Coast side of things, you can see these Cape values here getting close to 2,000 in a few spots. This could be enough to get the job done for a very isolated severe thunderstorm or turn. I'm talking about one or two cells firing up, not the uh, two dozen that we saw on Saturday just gone, and they could get quite strong. They'll most likely be on the slow moving side of things like we saw on the weekend. Uh, they will also be very isolated in nature. They'll have that high cloud base as we saw on the weekend and likely a low precipitation type. So they could be quite beautiful uh, for a storm chaser in the area. Uh, but these thunderstorms definitely do pack in a bit of a punch at this point in time. The forecast modeling is suggesting that these are a possibility now and they're definitely something to be watching quite closely. Now, there's no need to panic. There's no need, need to be worrying about these severe thunderstorms at this point in time because it is just a possibility on the forecast models. It's not a guarantee at this point in time. Considering that other forecast models have this sea breeze line coming in a little bit earlier, particularly the GF which is calling for this to come in and towards southeast Queensland at about midday or so. The ground is just not going to be able to warm up enough, even though it's going to be an extremely warm day. There's just going to be too much dry air and just not enough warming to get the job done uh, throughout southeast Queensland uh, if this was to come in a little bit earlier. So again, we're going to have to wait till tomorrow to see exactly when this line of wind is going to come through and this cool change does sweep through into southeast Queensland. Another thing that's often a concern through southeast Queensland is high cloud coverage. So leftovers from yesterday's thunderstorm outbreak, for example, but it doesn't look like we've got anything of the sort coming through southeast Queensland, especially through Thursday morning. You can see it's going to be a very clear day through southeast Queensland. A few speckled clouds here and there, but cloud coverage expected to be around zero octaves, one or two at the absolute most. So it's going to be clear skies. That's not going to be a concern for these severe thunderstorms. It really is only the dry air, uh, which is a pretty big concern. That's one of the big uh, kind of do or die factors for these severe thunderstorms. But if we were to take a look at a convective sounding, we've got moisture pretty much 
all through the atmosphere once these thunderstorms and that cool change does get going. And you can even see that bit of the dry slot in the uh, mid-levels of the atmosphere as well, just above the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So again, not looking too bad, but we do have quite a lot of dry air into the lower levels of the environment uh, earlier on in the day. So it really is kind of a touch and go case at this point in time. If thunderstorms can get themselves off the ground, low precipitation, high base, that sort of stuff, quite isolated in nature, but they could drop some sporadic uh, large hailstones. Now, in terms of the threat to the Brisbane City area and also for the Gold Coast by extension, very minimal at this point in time. Thunderstorms could develop around Red Cliff, Caboolture, and then up towards Bribey Island, Maroochydore, and the Glasshouse Mountains. They could get that close to the coastline, but in terms of the thunderstorms in the Brisbane City area, highly unlikely. In fact, close to 0% chance at this point in time. They're just not going to happen. They'll have to happen too early on in the day, and as we just mentioned, they'll just develop into clouds and not thunderstorms if that sea breeze line comes through the Brisbane City area at about 12 o'clock, which is kind of what it's expected to do. We're not expecting thunderstorms to develop into the Brisbane City area or the Gold Coast area, or even the Gold Coast hinterland pretty much full stop. Some isolated thunderstorm activity is possible out towards the west of Boona and Mo Desert, but it doesn't look like anything too crazy is again going to develop there. Some good thunderstorms are actually possible a little bit further inland. They'll be more of our outback convective pulse thunderstorm style out around Injun, Tarim and Rolleston. These ones could have some pretty gnarly features on the radar imagery, but again, not likely to be anything too crazy or of the severe variety. And then you can see pushing the forecast models forward, nothing in the way of thunderstorm risk apart from along the Capricorn coastline briefly on Friday afternoon and evening. A few thunderstorms in central Queensland on Saturday evening before a gnarly outbreak comes out. And this one looks like it's going to be a very precipitation heavy one on Sunday. This one could pack a punch as well. Lots of thunderstorm activity expected in the vicinity of uh, southeast Queensland. And again, a lot of convective available potential energy as well in the atmosphere. So we could be talking about a prolonged risk of high precipitation storm modes coming through southeast Queensland. Now high precipitation, that sounds great, especially for parched southeast Queensland. And it is high precipitation uh, storm modes bring those squall lines. They bring those heavy uh, uh, pockets of rainfall coming through. Uh, and whilst the risk of severe thunderstorms isn't exactly elevated through uh, Sunday along the leading edge of what could be this kind of squall line coming through, we may see some strong severe thunderstorms or even some supercellular thunderstorms developing with the typical large hailstones up to four centimetres in diameter, some damaging locally destructive winds and some heavy pockets of rainfall. But then later on in the afternoon and out towards the evening between four o'clock and out to about eight o'clock, including for Brisbane and the Gold Coast and throughout much of southeast Queensland, including Toowoomba, Warwick, Chinchilla, Tarum, Injun, and out towards Rolleston, Tambo, and Orcathella, squall lines look to be the go. And this is again for Sunday afternoon and evening. A couple of residual thunderstorms along the Capricorn coastline on Monday afternoon and evening and maybe one or two into the Gold Coast hinterland area and through the Glasshouse Mountains. We'll also likely see thunderstorms coming through into the later parts of uh, October. And this may come from a bit of a rainfall event that's now beginning to show itself on the forecast models. So this will be another feature to watch here. But definitely Southeast Queensland looks to be the hotspot over the next couple of weeks. We've got plenty of stuff on the forecast in the way of severe thunderstorms, just general thunderstorm activity. And now also what looks like to be a common complex low pressure system coming through at the end of October. Uh, whether this turns into a complex low pressure system or what the GFS is expecting to be a kickstarter to a very powerful line of thunderstorms for a couple of nights across southeast Queensland, still a little bit uncertain, but I reckon between the 30th of October out to about the 6th of November, we're going to enter this high energy period and we're going to be talking about rainfall and thunderstorms across southeast Queensland in very detailed fashion for quite a while. Now, just whilst we are on the tropical side of things, we would like to talk about that low pressure system offshore for Western Australia. We do have this one here developing north of the Cocos Keeling Islands, looking substantially better than what I expected it to do, and it looks like it's now beginning to develop a defined low-pressure centre of circulation. We don't have any reliable wind observations in the region, but you can see the wind gusts around the Cocos Keeling Islands, or the sustained winds rather, around that 20 km an hour mark, starting to pick up about uh, uh, after what they normally are, and you can see a lot of lightning and a lot of thunder now beginning to blow up in this, uh, I guess, convective zone here, which is this low-pressure system beginning to develop. It looks quite impressive here and it definitely looks like it's going to make a decent crack of becoming a low pressure system or even a tropical cyclone well towards the northwest of the Cocos Keeling Islands. It's got about 48 hours of primed conditions before wind shear starts to become this system collapses in on itself and it also doesn't have much space as well. You can see it's got to do it towards the east of the 90 degree uh, uh, line here which is currently located, well currently it is always located right here. Uh, so this system yeah like I said has about 36 hours before it leaves the Australian area of responsibility and if it uh, does 
does become a tropical low or a tropical cyclone, it'll become the Mauritius weather people's uh, responsibility and problem where they've already got a tropical cyclone over there. I can't remember its name. I think it runs uh, with an A name, but it is moving towards uh, Mauritius and Reunion Island and also over towards Madagascar. Of course, neither of these systems are any threat to the West Australian mainland in any way, shape or form, and neither will they will be. And just before I get to this system that's moving through southeastern Australia and uh, bringing all sorts of severe thunderstorm risks towards. But if we just pull this back towards what we saw last night, just towards the north of Perth, we actually had a cyclonic center of low pressure system here, uh, moving into the suburb of Two Rocks and Yanchip. And you can see this system here basically developed an eye before it moved in towards the northern suburbs of Perth. It also provided a hell of a lot of rainfall for the Perth suburbs as well, basically raining for about two or three hours straight through pretty much every suburb into the Perth metro area, right down to about Secret Harbour. Uh, my, weight get, my rain gauge picked up 51 millimeters overnight five times more than the rainfall that I was expecting and again this uh, storm system picked up uh, or packed a lot of uh, punch in terms of the rainfall even out towards the weird got some good rainfall accumulations were reported very healthy stuff indeed especially ahead of what they're expecting to be one of the best or if not the best grain harvests on record out towards the weed belt this rainfall very welcome indeed and that's again more rainfall that's going to be leading into what looks to be a rather wet end to spring and into a wet start towards summer as well a lot of this rainfall very much unexpected as well and I think that's something that we need to remember through southwestern WA is these cutoff low pressure systems often pack a lot more rainfall than what the forecast models can pick up and what the forecast ends up suggesting. So next time we see a cutoff low pressure system coming in towards the southwest of WA, I'm definitely going to be upping my rainfall estimations, that's for sure. These systems can pack a punch and they can pack a very good punch indeed. In terms of what's not packing a good punch, it's this severe thunderstorm threat across South Australia. It is a gnarly one. We're talking about the widespread risk of thunderstorms with not the threat that we want, hailstones and damaging winds. It'd be great if they could bring some rainfall, but unfortunately uh, these kind of bands here are more sort of the ones carrying those larger sporadic raindrops that are causing these higher reflectivities and not so much bringing in that much needed rainfall that we really do need across this part of South Australia and then in towards southeastern Australia as well. So again these uh, thunderstorms whilst they are good news because they are bringing that rainfall considering the fact that they could be bringing the risk of large hailstones which is going to damage the crops that are still in the ground like I said in yesterday's forecast update just get them out as soon as possible get your crops out as soon as possible before the thunderstorm risk develops later this afternoon into this evening but damaging winds is also a threat and with the ground in the condition that it is extremely dry through South Australia and then this also carries over and towards northern Victoria and through the southwestern corner of New South Wales up towards Broken Hill dust storms are going to occur later today and big ones are expected at that these thunderstorms as they blow through heavy rainfall is expected really beginning to develop through the Eponence around the next couple of hours we will be talking about this severe thunderstorm risk materializing from about 2 30 in the afternoon onwards for the Adelaide city area thunderstorms expected to blow in about about four or five o'clock they will be pretty patchy and sporadic in nature moving through very quickly with some damaging to the locally destructive wind gusts expected into the Adelaide city area now the risk of thunderstorms will ease off very early tomorrow morning after about two or three o'clock before rainfall traverses in towards Victoria and a very strong low pressure system is expected to move through the Great Australian Bight this is a look at sustained winds approaching 90 kilometers an hour here in the Bass Strait uh, uh, towards the east of the Great Australian Bight and wind gusts could approach 135 kilometers an hour in places and this includes the lower southeast of South Australia and the entire southwest coast of Victoria, including Windy Warrnambool. We're also looking at some strong wind gusts moving into the Melbourne city area as well. Geelong Airport could cop winds as strong as 110 kilometres an hour, and through Melbourne gusts could reach 100 to 105 kilometres an hour. Strong to locally destructive wind gusts are expected along the snowy mountains as well and into the Victorian Alps. Gusts could approach 130 kilometres an hour in both locations, and wind gusts up to 125 kilometres an hour are also possible along the Gippsland coastline, and winds up to 110 kilometres an hour are forecast along the King, uh, King Island area and for the Fono Islands and also for the west coast of Tasmania. It's going to be a windy 36 hour period and then by the looks of things after that it be, does begin to weaken off a little bit. We'll still see some strong winds throughout the west coast of Tasmania but those very very strong cold fronts are going to be blowing through on a very regular basis. Whilst we do still see them uh, coming through they do begin to weaken off a little bit as we head out in towards the last month of spring that being November. Anyways that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. It's been a nightmare to record and I do apologise if it has came out a little bit later than usual of course a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on the screen right now could not run the show without them and as always their support is massively appreciated uh, i really don't know where i'd be without the channel sponsors and the facebook supporters and if you want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video update as well click the join button down below it's the best way to support the cyclones oz channel financially plenty to come today on the facebook page as well i'm having a busy bee over there in terms of forecasts and content so check it out uh, and if you've got anything interesting that you'd like to let me know of then check out my email as well link in the channel description but that's all for me today. Have a great Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next storm.
Goodbye.